science is all about neutrality. And the science, I mean, think of where science comes from. It comes from people in, 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 in Papua New Guinea. It comes from people in Japan. It comes from people in the United States, Canada, everywhere. It's, it's transcultural. It's transnational. It's trans just about anything you think about. But it's, it's a way of arriving at a consensus about reality and testing that reality against observation. And if, if that reality div that is predicted by the current theories, then and, 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 and observations say this is not quite right, then science, science proceeds by error. Science accepts, unlike other ways of discovering the nature of the universe, accepts that it might be wrong. And through its acceptance that it might be wrong, it is open to correction. Steve, do you want to jump in? Yes. Um, science talks the talk, but it doesn't walk the walk. Okay? Oh, come on. That's the bottom line. Yeah. So everything that, that Peter has said is correct as a matter of principle and is what science officially stands for. But it has not lived up to it in yes, its it history. Give me an example. I'm sorry. I mean, it should be perfectly obvious. This is where, you know, Angela and I have some disagreements on some other matters. But it, it seems to me that it's pretty obvious it's, that one of the reasons why all of the so-called post-colonial critiques have so much purchase is because of science's own hypocrisy with regard to applying the method that it claims to be living up to. Okay? And you cannot deny it. So it's, you can't just always be trotting out the pieties about science tests of views, blah, 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 when you look at who's exactly being allowed to test the views and which views are being tested, etc., etc. So the institutionalization of science is actually a very crucial issue in terms of limiting the potential of science, and you're not addressing that at all. You're actually acting as if it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, so just, I'm, just to clarify, you're saying the problem is not the principle, the it's principles the fact are, it, it's look, not this been is applied. why I talked about Francis Bacon, because if you look at the way in which Francis Bacon describes the scientific method, it is all about removing bias. It's about What's removing bias, bias that comes from many different places. So the principles are fine. It's just the way it's been institutionalized through the university system, through, through learned societies. I mean, that's why there's a kind of sociological blockage no, with regard not. to science actually living up to its full potential. Well, of, of course there may be a blockage in living Aha! up to, to its... <laughs> I hope you get, get that or get that photograph. <laughs> My finger is still pointing towards <laughs> the sky. <laughs> of course, as long as it's the right finger. And yeah. it may be that bringing women, and we have to talk about women. What is it with you and women? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it may be, it, it, uh, I think truth is out there regardless of the gender. And it may be that ways of arriving at truth might depend upon the way that we approach science. You, women might have a different way of approaching science. I, but, 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 I'm but, losing but, it, man. But, but, but we're going to get there in the end. And I don't know, I don't care how we get there, but it's the scientific method, that is, the appeal to empirical observation allied with the reticulation of theories that is the way that we're going to do it. Okay, so just to clarify, you're saying um, there has been a problem with the way this method has been... No, not particularly. I mean, it might have slowed us down, but... but, but, but might have slowed we've, us down. <laughs> yeah, but, but we we've, think where we are compared with where we were 200 years ago. I mean, I think science, I think the achievements of science, the achievements of technology that depend upon fundamental science... But what about science, the issues of domination that she's raising? What? The issues of domination that a Angela was alluding to I in her opening remarks. That. I mean... I mean, why should I worry about that? I mean, if we're in, in pursuit of the truth, then it doesn't matter who dominates Actually, the truth. Actually, it does matter. <laughs> it, it, it affects Sorry. the pursuit of the truth. I mean, uh, you yourself yeah. said science has errors and it can proceed. Yeah. You also said there are obstacles to progress. You're one of them. And, <laughs> and, 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 and in, 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 in the areas where I do research, you see, this is one of the problems. You know, you say it's rubbish, it's nonsense, etc. If I said your research in physical chemistry is rubbish and nonsense, um, 
I'd like I'd to agree, actually. I think it was well, you, you might. But I mean, the thing is that the, this is not a scientific argument. It's simply an expression of prejudice. And so prejudice has its role sociologically. It has its role in people's lives. But it's not a way of arriving at the truth. Yes, it is. And, oh. Uh, I, I very rarely heard a defense of prejudice. No, I'm, I'm prepared. <laughs> Uh, I, I think prejudice comes into science where you think that current theories are probably plausible but need correction, distortion, pointing in the different direction. So I think prejudice about science being in the right direction in general is, is plausible. But, but unlike in religion where prejudice is effectively heresy, or the, the objection to, to prejudice is heresy. In, in science, the, the, it's, it's the discovery of the distortion of an idea that leads to progress. I have nothing against prejudice, Peter, even my own. Uh, do you know, I, before we came on stage, I really imagined myself to be on Peter's side because I'm a humanist. And I studied engineering at university, so I'm not entirely you know, outside your set. But you embody the point I was making earlier, which is confusing prejudice for fact, you know, confusing your bias for objectivity. And this is the part, and I completely agree with Stephen Rupert, surprisingly, on this, is that you, there needs to be humility in science. It's kind of the basis upon which you have to do your work because otherwise you can't control for your biases. You can't correct your mistakes because you'll never know that you're making them. Well, I think... Um that, that is entirely consistent with what I said earlier, that, that, that science is, is based upon the ability to make and to acknowledge error. And I think that is the humility. But you're not admitting any error. You're saying, I look at the history of science, and actually I think it's been fine. It hasn't been fine. There have been huge mistakes that have made in fact. Look at just eugenics. But just so what, eugenics. Yeah. How devastatingly wrong that was. Yeah, uh, in, in, indeed. But I, th I think the, 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 the core point that you have put your finger on is that s science should be humble in the sense that it proceeds by admitting... No, I'm saying scientists should be humble. That's what I'm saying. Science well, is inherently humble. Well, come I back agree to with that. that. Let scientists me say, science or scientists should be humble because they acknowledge that they are making errors. And I think there is no other source of knowledge in, in, in the modern world, religion particularly, but art in, as another example, where error cannot be acknowledged. But we, we scientists acknowledge error, and that is the foundation of our success. Not acknowledging error is also the foundation of a lot of scientific errors. That's, what I'm, that's a point that we're trying to make here. But well, I don't mind about that. The fact that we acknowledge that there are errors I is mean, very important. I mean, in far, you know, it, it takes a long time for people to acknowledge their errors. And very often they die before it happens. I don't you care. Know, it, it, there are scientists I know who have had terrible ideas and they haven't been proven wrong in their lifetime because they haven't had the humility to read the critiques of their work and see that they might be wrong. And so well, long after their death, a, an accumulation of research well, has to prove them but, wrong. But, and even then there's resistance because they yeah, were so slow but in Mac, acknowledging Mac it Planck in the first place. said that you know, progress in science occurs funeral by funeral. <laughs> because the right, so this is an argument for killing people. <laughs> Right? I mean, this is how. Well, we, no, no, no. You're you're making the argument for for killing. Yes, you. scientific terrorism. Yes. yes. I, 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 suicide bombers out there. I think. I, 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 I think I would um, argue in favour of that. Actually. Moving, moving swiftly to one side. I, I want to bring us back to this question of observation and the uh, role of observation um, in science. Um, does human observation enable us to choose between models and theories? Um, and if so, how does it do that? If you look at me, you know what I'm saying. Do you want me to start? Yeah. I actually think human to continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.